All right, we'll get started because I want to be mindful of everybody's time. And first of all, I want to thank all of you who have joined us to learn more about Patagonia. Um, I have my favorite friends from this area of the world that have, have decided to participate with us. And I'm going to introduce um, Felipe here in just a minute. He's my main contact that I work with at Australis. But um, I wanted just to make a note at the bottom, there's either a Q&A box or there's a chat box at the bottom that you can actually write your questions as we're going through the presentation and we'll answer them at the end. So again, it's at the bottom, you'll see a Q&A box and also a chat box. You can type it into either one of those. Um, but to introduce myself, I'm Lisa Torgerson, actually Lisa Taney. I'm get, trying to get people used to my married name, but I've been Torgerson for so long. So I am the um, manager of leisure services here for our company as far as our leisure team and groups. And, and we decided to do these webinars for our clients actually before COVID and it's worked out really well. Um, to keep people basically informed of de destinations, maybe they didn't know they wanted to visit, but destinations that I think are well worth a visit. So I'm going to introduce Felipe. He is my contact for Australis, and then he'll introduce Susanna and tell you a little bit about her, and then we'll answer questions at the end. So Felipe, you can take it away. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Kim and Lisa, for having us, and to everybody here. We are very glad to be uh, present, presenting a little bit about Patagonia at the very end of South America or the very beginning of South America, you can say it either way. So no further ado, let me introduce you Susana, Susana Mendoza, she, 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 she's our chief of expedition based in Punta Arenas in charge of, of uh, the excursions and the entire experience on board and in the land for Australia. So no further ado, please. Uh, Susana, uh, go ahead and, uh, and present us the beautiful places in uh, the southern tip of uh, Patagonia. So thank you very much. Okay. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. It's five o'clock here in South America in Punta Arenas. I am Susana. As Felipe said, I'm based here in Punta Arenas, uh, in the heart of Patagonia. And um, well, I'm very glad to stay here again, showing a little bit of Patagonia and uh, very glad to be back <laughs> um, to the trip again. Uh, it, was, it has been three very hard years. And uh, well, last season we had a very special short and chaotic season. We have designed a special route for our local uh, travelers since the borders were closed, so we couldn't go to Ushuaia, but we are very happy to let you know that this season we are gonna um, retake our historical track. So before to show the presentation, um, we have a very nice video. Uh, we have some uh, technical problems, but I think Lisa is going to send the video after this presentation. Uh, if you want to use it in your webs or something like that. So, yeah, so um, we'll, we'll send everybody a copy of this video because we're having issues with the sound, but I think the pictures speak for itself. So I wanted Susanna to still show the pictures. So, but we'll send everybody a copy of this video um, so that you can watch it at, le at your leisure. And we'll also put it on our website as well. So I don't know if you can see the video, yes? Not yet. I see the screen with your video. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Wait a little. So please be patient because we are from Patagonia. <laughs> um, So I'm gonna, uh, here it is, to do, do. So. now. Well, I'm gonna start with the presentation. I'm gonna show you the video okay. at the end, just. Yeah, and if we can't share the video, we will send it to him, but we'll try it at the end. Yeah, it's perfect. perfect. So here we are. Okay, so um, one of the um, 
Here it is. One of the um, important things that you have to know that uh, Australis, I'm pretty sure that most of you have heard something about us, about our product, um, about Patagonia. Um, Australis is a Chilean company, a Chilean cruise line company, but the most important thing that we are more than a nice vessel, more than a very comfortable uh, ship, we are uh, an experience, a whole experience. So the idea of our product is to invite our travelers to explore Patagonia on board a very nice vessel, but the luxury is outside. So let's start with this um, presentation, first of all. Well, you know that we are located in uh, South America. Um, as I've mentioned before, I'm in Punta Arenas, one of our main ports from where uh, we are departing. Uh, and what is the interesting thing of Australis is that we connect Patagonia. Now, when we are talking about Patagonia, we're not talking about Chile or Argentina. We are talking about a unique place with a unique landscape, a unique culture, unique food, etc. So we talk about Patagonia. And Australis is a very nice way to connect Chilean and Argentinian Patagonia. Why? Um, most of your clients probably to get here to fly down to Patagonia, they have to go to Buenos Aires in Argentina or to Santiago in Chile. And um, for example, we are going to start our trip in Buenos Aires. So they can take a flight from Buenos Aires to El Calafate probably, and then they take another flight to go down to Ushuaia in Tierra del Fuego. And after two or three flights, people are totally tired and they can take our cruise, Australis cruises. And they start to navigate for the Beagle Channel, Cape Horn, um, for four nights and five days, enjoying beautiful landscape up to arrive to Punta Arenas. And then they can take another flight to go up to Santiago. Or if they have enough time, they can take a bus to enjoy Torres del Paine National Park, that it's a very interesting highlight to here in uh, Patagonia. So as I've mentioned before, we have um, two vessels. We can depart or from Ushuaia or from Punta Arenas uh, in Chile. And uh, we have two vessels right now. Last season, we have operated only with the Ventus Australis, but now we are going to start this season with two vessels, the Stella Australis and the Ventus Australis. Uh, both of them uh, have 100 cabins, um, a maximum capacity of 200 passengers, plus 64 crew members. Both vessels are exactly the same, and we are very proud to tell that they were built here in Chile. We are a totally Chilean product. Uh, they were built in Valdivia, that is a beautiful city too, in the south of Chile, northern Patagonia. And uh, both uh, offers the same tracks. So when one vessel is departing from Punta Arenas, the other at the same time is departing from Ushuaia. All those red points are the places that we visit because we offer excursions every day. Actually, we offer two different excursions, one in the morning, one in the afternoon after lunch. And um, as I told you, the idea is to uh, invite our passengers to enjoy outside Patagonia. Every day in the morning or in the afternoon before to, before to go to our excursion, we have to take these zodiacs. We have six zodiacs in each vessel for our excursions. And uh, our expedition team, and the sailors, they will be in charge of the security and safety of our passengers. Um, it's true that the most important is to enjoy Patagonia, but safety is something very, very important for us. 
from the vessel to the coast or to the beach or the landing area, we have not more than 10 or 15 minutes of Zodiac rides. Um, in that place, the expedition team will be waiting for uh, our passengers with this gangway in order to provide a very safe and dry uh, landing. In every excursion, in every uh, route, we have different highlights. One of the most important, of course, are the glaciers. Um, I'm pretty sure that you have heard about the Darwin Mountain Range, La Cordillera Darwin. It's um, the southernmost ice field that is in the heart of Tierra del Fuego. It's a very unexplored place. So it's an uh, amazing experience to be there in front of this huge wall of ice. Uh, it's uh, unforgettable. I've been working for the company for about 15 years. I've started in 2004 as an expedition guide and every time I go on board it's a new experience for me. Uh, I'm never tired about that. It's beautiful. It's simply amazing. Of course the other highlight of our uh, trip uh, is the wildlife being the star, the penguin, the Magellanic penguin. Uh, this species is one of the 17 different species of penguins worldwide. And in both ways, uh, departing or from Punta Arenas or from Ushuaia, our travelers have, have the option to enjoy these cute birds. We have different also excursions, trekking. Uh, we can walk through the forest, the Magellanic Forest. We can enjoy a few minutes in front of the glaciers, hearing the sound of the calvins. Um, of course, our expedition team, they are very um, um, knowledgeable group. It's a very, um, um, very nice group of guys. Uh, they have been working for us for several years, so they are very prepared in order to provide the um, current information about what is happening nowadays with the climate things, with um, the, the glaciers, how they are behaving nowadays, etc. In every point of landing, we uh, offer two or three different excursions, depending on um, our travelers' interest. For example, for those who prefer to get more information about the place that we are visiting, uh, about the history of that place, for example, probably they are going to choose the easier one, where the guides have plenty of time to provide that information. For those who prefer to walk a little bit more or to make some physical exercise after uh, a, huge, a huge lunch, <laughs> uh, probably they are going to uh, choose the demanding one. Uh, all of our excursions last about two hours, 30 minutes, three hours maximum. And uh, well, one of the main highlights of our trips is the Cape Horn. Cape Horn is the um, last expression of South America. Uh, we say it's the end of our continent or the beginning, as Felipe uh, said at the beginning. Um, and from Cape Horn, from this point to Antarctica, we have only 1,000 kilometers. That will be about 600 miles. So we are not so far from Antarctica. In this point, on this island, uh, there's no other building more than this lighthouse. And this lighthouse is also um, a Navy um, member house. Uh, it's a Chilean Navy man who is living here with his family for a whole year. Uh, I have to say that it's not a punishment to be there. Actually, they have to apply to this job. Um, his role in this part of the, the country is to control the maritime traffic. Um, they are living there for the whole year. Actually, the current family, they have reapplied. So this is uh, their second year. I think they are going to be there for uh, until November when the new family is coming um, on the island. 
So our passengers, if we disembark, because it's weather uh, permitting, uh, if we do some part, we can visit the lighthouse. We can visit also this beautiful monument. This is the Albatrosses monument uh, facing the south. Actually, all this, uh, the huge mass of uh, water that we can observe at the other side of the island is the famous Drake Passage or the Drake Sea. It's a very, um, it's um, an amazing feeling when you are there, you really feel so tiny in front of that immensity. So uh, as a summarizing, these are our highlights, wildlife, penguins, glaciers from the Darwin mountain range and Cape Horn among others. Uh, to have an idea of a day on board, a normal day on board, we start very early in the morning uh, depending on the day, we kind of start at six or seven o'clock in the morning with a uh, early risers coffee. Uh, for example, normally the people coming from uh, United States, they really love to wake up very, very early at five, six o'clock. They are all of them. They are walking around, uh, enjoying a cup of coffee uh, to wait for the uh, for the sun in the morning. And at eight o'clock, we have the breakfast in the dining room. Then at 9 a.m. more or less, we have our first uh, landing, our first excursion. We are going to back on board at 1 p.m. for lunch. Um, after that, we have some presentations, probably an hour to take a short nap if you want. <laughs> and then we have our second excursion at 3 p.m. more or less. Um, then Three hours later, we're gonna back on board to, um, to have dinner. And then we have some other activities, um, documentary film, etc. And of course, they can enjoy the bar. Um, we are an all-inclusive experience too. The bar is open from 10 a.m. up to midnight. We close the bar at midnight because next day we have to uh, start really, really early. And here also, um, just to show you that Patagonia is a corner full of life. Um, some examples of wildlife, the penguins, albatrosses, foxes, some sea mammals, etc. And also, uh, we focus a lot in this um, tiny forest, we said. Uh, we are working for the last 12 years with a group of scientists uh, in a very nice program called VCE because of the name in Spanish, Vinculación Ciencia Empresa. This is a program that links science with the private um, area or the private world here in Chile, in this case, Australis. And the idea is to um, invite the people, our passengers, to show them that science could be uh, easier. Um, so these scientifics, they work uh, a lot of time with our guides, with our expedition guides, in order to provide the current and accurate information about uh, the, uh, how the flora is behaving in this part of the world. It's a very interesting job, and the people really enjoy this during our landings. And also for those who really love history, uh, for those clients that are in love with history. Also, our routes, both of our tracks are full, full of uh, historical places. For example, Charles Darwin, this very famous naturalist, he was here navigating the same fjords that we are navigating right now. Uh, he was here in 1830. Actually, he has disembarked in one place where the first encounter between the, um, the white uh, man and the, uh, one of the most important ethnical group here, the Jaganas, uh, happened. That is Ulaya Bay. It's a place that we visit departing from Punta Arenas or from Ushua. It's a very beautiful place. Also, some uh, 100 years before Darwin, Ferdinand Magellan was here. He was um, the captain who led this expedition 
that uh, discovered this uh, passage that connects the Atlantic Ocean with the Pacific Ocean. Um, I don't know if you know, but the Strait of Magellan, El Estrecho de Magallanes, was one of the most important commercial uh, routes uh, connecting Europe and Asia or connecting both coasts of the United States. Uh, up to 1914, when the uh, uh, Panama Canal was opened. And also another important explorer was uh, Fitzroy, Robert Fitzroy. Uh, he was a very young uh, captain who commanded the same expedition um, that Charles Darwin took to arrive here to Patagonia. So as I've mentioned also, they were the first explorer uh, who, um, who uh, met this uh, ethnical group. Uh, it was only in 1830, so they were the real first uh, inhabitants here in Patagonia. Um, it was amazing how they could survive in this um, part of the world where the, when the climate was totally uh, harder. Um, they were here navigating the fjords almost totally naked, just using this kind of flyer made of uh, one aquifer. But nowadays, we invite to our passengers to use this kind of uh, outfit. So we suggest to come on board with uh, waterproof um, uh, clothes, waterproof and warm clothes. Anyway, you can find this uh, information in our website. And if one of our travelers forgot something at home. We have also a small shopping board where they can find some fleece jackets and also some souvenirs to bring uh, to their families. Um, we have a very um, variety of uh, ages on board. I think the average age on board is about 50, 55, but every season, uh, this is changing. Um, younger people is coming on board because uh, people, after, after the pandemic, I think people really want to connect with nature. And um, I think that we are a very good option to um, connect with nature in a very pristine place where there is no other um, infrastructure actually where we disembark. There's nobody else, only our travel mates, and that is something very, very interesting. Last year, we are very proud to say that we were awarded as the world's best expedition cruise line. Um, so it's nice to uh, be back uh, in, this, uh, in this area with this beautiful, beautiful product. Now I want to show you a little bit about our uh, the cabins on board, a little bit of our life on board. As I uh, mentioned before, this is a very exclusive experience, but also an all-inclusive experience. We have nice um, lounges on board where the people can enjoy the navigation. Our guides uh, provide the lectures, uh, some documentary films too. They can also uh, our passengers can enjoy the, navi the navigation. We have, we have a small lounge, I can find it here, but it's a small lounge, the Yamana lounge, that is in the frontal part of our vessel, so they can stay there enjoying the navigation all the time. These are the cabins. Ventus Australis and Estelle Australis, as I mentioned at the beginning, are twin vessels, so they are exactly the same. There are some differences in the decoration, but all of them have very big windows. We have only external uh, cabins, there are no inner cabins. The main difference in between of the categories uh, is the window. If you realize this A uh, cabin, has this, this is the smaller window. Hmm? This is the main difference. And this is the superior one. We have four superior in each vessel. Uh, they are a little bit uh, bigger than the normal ones, but very comfortable, all of them. And this is a Stella Australis, very similar. 
um, yes, I've mentioned also that we have 100 cabins in each vessel, a, a maximum capacity of 200 passengers on board. So we have um, 37 cabins in A category, 38 in double A, and the triple A are 25 and four superiors. Now, here is the, um, the first row departing from Punta Arenas. Both tracks last uh, four nights, five days. When you depart from Punta Arenas, the second day, this is Punta Arenas. I don't know if you know this beautiful city. <laughs> um, I always say that it's one of the most beautiful city in Chile. It's, uh, it's a very nice place to be. I, I always suggest to spend one or two days because there are a lot of things to do around this city. The second day of our um, Fuero of Tierra del Fuego route is uh, Ainsworth Bay. In Ainsworth Bay, we have two different options for excursion. We have a, a very nice walk uh, through the Magellanic Forest, and we have a demanding option, a more demanding option for those people who prefer to walk a little bit and to get not too many information about the glacier or the the story for the people who prefer to take some, uh, I don't know, some uh, nice photographs, for example, they have the second option. And in the afternoon, we visit the Tucker Islands where we um, have a zodiac right to visit a very nice Magellanic penguin colony. The third day, for example, we visit Pia Glacier in the morning it's a very nice fjord uh, in the Beagle Channel. And uh, there we have also three different options of excursions. And in the afternoon, after this, um, after this uh, visit, we have a very nice activity named the Glacier Sally. It's um, navigation with the vessel, with the Ventus or the Stella Australis, uh, that lasts for about one hour where we visit a very nice part of the Beagle Channel with five or six different glaciers. Um, each glacier has the name of, uh, of a country uh, in honor of the first explorer who were in this part of the Beagle Channel. We have the uh, German glacier, France glacier, etc., And we have uh, some surprises on board in this activity. Day number three, for example, in the morning, very early, we visit Cape Horn, and in the afternoon, Gulaya Bay, that is uh, at Navarino Island. Navarino Island, uh, in this island, is located Puerto Williams. Probably you have heard about Puerto Williams. It's the southernmost um, uh, village in Chile. Gulaya Bay, it's very important because it was uh, um, the center where Jagan people encountered. Uh, it was like the capital of the Yamana people there. In this place, we have a center of information for only for Australian visitors. Uh, so it's a very, very nice place. Departing from Pontranas or from Ushuaia, you have the option to get to Gulaya Bay. And we uh, finish in Ushuaia. This is one of the most beautiful cities in Tierra del Fuego in Argentina. And uh, after Ushuaia, your clients can take a flight up to Calafato, Buenos Aires, etc. The other way is start from Ushuaia with a part at 8 p.m. from this city. And the next day, we we'll repeat uh, Cape Horn and Gulaya Bay. Then we visit. Pia Glacier in the morning and in the afternoon, we visit, this is new for this season, Porter Glacier. Porter is a very active glacier located near Pia Glacier. It's uh, the same fjord, but other arm of this fjord. And this is a zodiac ride. Uh, it's about 20 minutes from the vessel. And the idea is to stay in the front of the glacier for, I don't know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, waiting for a calling. It's amazing. 
Deck number four, we visit Agostini Sound, Aguila Glacier and Condor Glacier. Again, all those glaciers coming down from the Darwin Mountain Range. And last day, we visit Magdalena Island. That is one of the biggest Magellanic penguin colony. And then Punta Arenas. And um, to finish a little bit here, I want to show you our current rates, this season rates and all our departures. As Felipe has mentioned at the beginning, we have just uh, began our season. We had a special trip on September 21st, uh, a charter trip. And uh, this Sunday we have our first commercial departure. Everything is going very nice up to now. Um, passengers are very happy. We have a very nice crew on board. Very happy to be again back again after uh, three years far from Ushuaia. Uh, you can observe here we have four um, promotional departures, promotional rate departures, some low season departures, and the blue ones are the high season. So we operate from September to April. It means our spring and summer, your autumn and winter. And I think that's all COVID. Well, that was last year, but now, as Felipe said at the beginning, uh, we, um, we are going to, to be totally open on October 1st. Uh, mask face will be only a, a souvenir <laughs> after, after that uh, topic. And on board, of course, we suggest to use the mask in closest area, but of course, outside is optional. So um, uh, I think we can share with you this presentation. I don't know if you have any further question, Felipe. I don't know if I forgot something. No, you did it perfect. And, and only uh, to let you know, I just we just received an email from our people in operation, and uh, we have a, a regular emails from the crew. And uh, at this point, at this moment, Ventus is uh, departing from uh, Glacier. From Pia, Pia. Glacier. Yeah, from Pia Pia Glacier, right? At this moment, so yes. Yeah. I'm 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 seeing it in my cellular phone, so. Yeah, tomorrow morning, we hope they could disembark at Cape Horn. I, yeah, we have Cape Horn tomorrow yeah. morning, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah can I, I, can I, you I, tell them what the requirements are for entry, the current requirements? Can we go over that? I know we discussed it. I don't think we discussed it with the people attending. The request to, uh, the requirements to, enter to, enter. to Chile? Yes. Okay, to Chile from uh, October 1st, I think it will be only the, um, the vaccination certificate, yeah. any certificate. If you don't have uh, that certificate, you have to show a PCR. A PCR, right, right. And I think that's all. And uh, same in, thing in, to get in our In our case, uh, 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 we are asking that everybody that goes on board, they have to be vaccinated. Hmm? Yeah. That's going to be the rule for this season, but the country is, is, is yeah. not allowing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this season we we have decided to keep that request, uh, but I think we'll be open again next season. But yeah, this season everybody, uh, crew and passenger must be vaccinated on board. Okay, we do have a couple of questions, but I want to remind everybody that's watching, if you have questions, you can type them in the Q&A box or in the chat box. But I'll start with the first question. Um, someone would like to know, are there cabins dedicated to the single, single traveler and can you address pricing for single, single travelers? Yes, all our prices yes. are basis in, are basis in, a, in a double occupancy and somebody wants to go alone, they have to pay 50% more. So it's going to be 150%. That's 1.5. Yeah, 1. I'm 5. Gonna yeah there. All the big. rates are per person in double base. Okay, perfect. Then the next question is, what are the pros and cons of starting in Ushuaia versus Punta Arenas? Ooh. <laughs> I don't think yeah, I, I don't, I don't think there are pros and cons. The thing yeah. is, uh, at the end, depends on how you organize your pre and post tools and how you get the, uh, the air yeah. and rates. 
coming in via Buenos Aires and coming, going out via Santiago, do the opposite. If you can find a nice open jaw from the airline from one city to the other one, that's one uh, reason. And the other one is if you want to walk among penguins, you have to take the Ushuaia uh, Punta Arenas uh, route because uh, that's as, uh, uh, as uh, Susana was showing at the end of uh, the trip and uh, from, Punta Re from Ushuaia to Punta Arenas, we stop in Madalena Island. Madalena Island, uh, uh, you it's walk- It's a bigger among... colony. Absolutely. You walk among, uh, among penguins, among uh, 40,000 mm -hmm. penguins that they arrive uh, in the middle of September and they nest there until the end of uh, March, if, if, I'm, if I'm right, Susana. So the other, the other route from, uh, from uh, Punta Arenas to Ushuaia, we see the uh, penguins uh, from, the, from the zodiacs in Tokaraya. Yeah, it's a zodiac ride. Right. Zodiac so, ride. Right. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's a, the main uh, difference. Yeah. But for example, for those who really love birds, um, Tucker Island, it is true that it's a, only a zodiac, right? But it's, um, it's a zodiac ride uh, around an island full of nests, not only uh, penguin nesting there, it's full of different species of birds. It's about 30 different species of birds, actually. It's a very nice ecosystem. So it's very hard to say which uh, road is the best. I think, I think it's depending of um, the program that you, you can organize. For example, for the people who prefer to, there are many people who prefer to start in uh, Argentina and then they want to continue going up to the north of Chile to visit San Pedro de Atacama, for example, or vice versa. Perfect. All right, I don't see any other questions. Do we want to try to show the video maybe to end with that? Yep, yep. Um, do you want to try Felipe from your computer? Let me, yeah, I need to open it because I don't have it here with me now. Ah, okay, let me let try me, to. Let me try to do this. Now, you, 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 have, the, you have the presentation, Susana. I stop it. Yeah. Can you see it? I can see it. Yep. Yeah. There won't be any sound, but it's really beautiful picture. So I think this is a great way to end it. Yeah, this video is um it's a very nice because it really expresses and shows this. Um, was, was I was mentioned at the beginning. It's not only a nice vessel. It's not only nice cabins or delicious food. It's a whole experience to live uh, Patagonia, to to experience Patagonia, to feel Patagonia. Yeah. This is a little bit what uh, we divide the groups uh, in, in each excursion, we divide the groups by languages. Uh, so we, we make a group in English, German, in French. So each group is guided by one of the members of the expedition team. Um, they provide information in situ. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very remote and pristine area of the world. Well, important to say that all the places that we visit, all the places are part of two a huge national parks in Chile, the Alberto D'Agostini National Park and the Cabo de Hornos National Park. So they are really pristine places. Up to now, there is no many infrastructure. Nobody so we invite here, everybody so. to, nobody lives there, only this um, uh, member of the Chilean Navy on Cape Horn. <laughs> <laughs> well, wonderful. Well, thank you, Felipe and Susana, for sharing Patagonia with us this afternoon.
Um, we will send this video out to all of you that attended. So if you'd like to watch it again with the sound, um, you'll be able to do that. But they're also going to send the entire presentation that we can send to you. Um, and we'll also post it on our on our um, web page. We have a whole webinar session that you can go and watch webinars that we have recorded. Uh, if you have any particular questions, please feel free to reach out to either myself or one of our team, and we'd be happy to answer any questions that maybe we didn't get to today. So thank you again, Felipe and Susana, for spending your time with us. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, well, we, we hope to see you on board this season or the next season. Sounds wonderful. All right. Thank have a great day, everybody. Much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.